I greet you again this day in the name of the King of Kings. May you experience the goodness of God and thank Him for all the privileges that we have. We know that in Him we may overcome in all circumstances. We would also like to welcome you to today's sermon. It is the second in our What is Faith series. Jan Duberi will share God's word in how we may persist in faith. Vaughan Lowe would lead us in praise and worship. As a spiritual family, we would like to invite you to make use of the emergency number of the congregation to talk to someone if you have a need to. The contact number is 073-573-4869. If you would require counseling, looking for help in emotional healing, or if you are facing some trauma, you are invited to contact the Moraleta Wholeness Center. The number is 012-997-8035. There are online ways to give tithings and offerings. Let us continue to support the work of our local congregation in the community. Details are on the screen. Let us be cheerful givers and may the Lord see our hearts. Thank you for your care and support. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you granted a measure of faith to us all. Please teach us how to grow our faith and how to persist in faith. May we also testify and share our faith to others. Open our hearts and minds in Jesus. Amen. Welcome to you today. And today we have a special guest here, Kanil, and it is his birthday today. So Kanil is also one of the people to, make, to ensure that we have videos that we can send out with our sermons. So Kanil, a happy birthday to you, and may the Lord bless you with everything you need. 
Okay. We are busy with a series on faith, um, and today's sermon, um, the topic is persisting in faith. So I'm going to start with five reasons why you should persist in your faith. But first, let us pray. Lord, thank you that we know that it is by faith that we are healed, it is by faith that we are called, and it is by faith that you make us whole. And Lord, I pray that you will now work in our hearts so that we will be built up by your glory so that we can go and testify to your to your people, to the world, so that they may come to know you more and more every day. We pray this in your name. Amen. Thomas Aquinas was an Italian philosopher, and he said the following um, regarding faith. To the one who has faith, no explanation is necessary. To the one without faith, no explanation is possible. So faith brings you to a heavenly understanding that far exceeds human reasoning. And persisting in faith is not for selfish gain. So I just want to make one thing clear before we go on. And that is persisting in faith is not um, something to twist God's arm with, um, with what you want. But it is keeping the faith for God to proclaim his kingdom so that we can reach more people and so that more people can receive the gift of faith. So let's take a look at the five reasons why you should persist in faith once you receive it. Number one, it is a gift. So use it. In Romans 12, verse 1 to 8, um, it says in Scripture there, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true prop, true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith, if it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. So now we can ask the question, how do I receive the gift of faith? As Romans 12 tells us, it is a gift given by God that he gives to the people. But it also starts with an offering that we have to make. We have to give ourselves. So this is not a gift that we receive um, for our own benefit. This is a gift that we have to give away also. Um, and the first thing to do is to follow Christ's example and to give up our own being for Christ's to being to live through us, through his Holy Spirit. Once you receive a gift, it is probably packaged in nice packaging, nice paper, ribbons or a bow attached to it. But then it's just a gift. But the gift only becomes purposeful when you open it. Then it becomes useful. So the gift of faith is also to be opened up as part of the body of Christ. And through your faith, you must actively live out the gifts that you receive. The second one of the reasons why you have to persist in faith when you receive it is that it confirms Christ's authority and also 
it confirms your focus. So the scripture that I want to read you there comes from Matthew 14, and it's from verse 22 to 31. Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? So here one of the disciples of Jesus, a person following Jesus, a person that works with Jesus side by side each day, and he has little faith. And still he gets called upon the water. But the moment he loses focus, he starts to sink. The moment the, his faith in the authority in Christ gets shattered, he starts to sink. So to persist in faith is to keep the authority of Jesus as the person and the King and the Lord who he is in position but then also to keep your focus on him and not let the winds and the waves of the world come to shift your mind into something and take it off the authority of Christ. And still, when Jesus calls Peter, you of little faith, still Jesus is the one that tells Peter, on you I will build my church. You will be the rock. So even if you today feel like you have little faith, don't be discouraged about it. That is the more reason to persist in your faith because even Peter, who had little faith, became the rock on which the church was built. And then the, th the third reason why we should persist in faith is that it builds your belief. The scripture there comes from Matthew 8, verse 5 to 13. And it says, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home, paralyzed, suffering terribly. Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east, and the West, and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness, where there will be a weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go, let it be done just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed at that moment. So we go from one with little faith to one with a huge faith, the centurion. Now, the centurion was an officer um, 
of the Roman people. So it, it wasn't true nature of them to be followers of Christ. But yet this centurion knew about God's power. He knew that Jesus Christ was the one that was able to heal people. So he went up to him and he persisted in his faith, walked up to Jesus and asked him to heal his servant. And then Jesus does it. So to build up your belief through your faith is to go beyond reasoning. It's actually a journey of experiencing the power of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit working through him in our lives and what we see around us. But isn't it true that we, we hear about miracles, but many times we don't experience it them ourselves? Let me tell you, we struggle to see it because we don't look for miracles, because every day is a miracle in itself. Just the fact that the sun comes up each day is a miracle. The fact that there are seasons changing is a miracle. The fact that you are a living human being is a miracle. And it's a journey experiencing so that you can grow in your belief and grow in your gift of faith. The fourth reason brings us to restoration. And that is, the scripture is Mark 2, verse 1 to 12. And I'll read it for you. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large number that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking of them to, to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately Jesus knew in his, in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, Why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say to this paralyzed man? Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, Get up, take your mat and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. He got up, took his mat and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone and they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. And what comes into play in this scripture is the fact that your faith can actually restore the people around you by the way you live out your faith actively. These people, the, these friends of the, this paralyzed man, went to the extreme measures to get this man to Jesus' feet. Now, I can imagine the big crowd there, and they can't get in, so they went up the roof, digging a hole in the roof, stuff falling on the people from below, and still, I can just imagine Jesus moving away and letting this paralyzed man being lifted down, um, lowered down to his feet. And then when he saw his friend's faith, he told the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven. So let us remember that your faith can restore the people around you. Your faith can be the reason why people's sins are forgiven. And it's supposed to be shared because you can't keep it to yourself. This is a gift that you receive to go and give to others as well. So you share it with your friends. You share it with those in need of a little faith, in need of big faith, in need of the faith in Christ. 
And then the last reason, but not the only, is the fact that it has to be done with co-believers. So to persist in faith, you need the people around you. So I'm reading there from the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance to the, the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So don't be discouraged. With a cloud of witnesses, a cloud of co-believers that walks this um, journey, this faith journey with you, run this race with wholeheartedly. Run this race focused to the winning line. Focus on the winning line. Because what do we receive in return? Eternal life. So that faith is the goal. Faith is that finish line that we worked against, that we raced to. But then again, we can't do it alone. We have to take other people with us to also get eternal life, to be able to spend time with God in eternity. May you be blessed by these reasons so that when you receive the gift of faith, or when you already receive the gift of faith, faith, that you will persist in keeping the faith, that you will persist in knowing that it's a gift that you have to use, that you will persist in giving the authority to Christ, taking it away from yourself and focusing on him and his will. And let that be the reason for your belief in Christ to be built, that your belief system will change the people around you. And may you bring restoration as you journey with other people and then do it with your co-believers because that is where you get your strength from. That is where you get your encouragement from. It's from co-believers. So then again, I want to end off with a saying from Thomas Aquinas that says, to the one who has faith, no explanation is necessary because through the Holy Spirit, we experience it. But to the one without faith, no explanation is possible. So today you can choose because the gift of faith is freely given by, by Christ Jesus. If you want to receive this gift, here are the five reasons that you can persist in faith to grow in your faith and love for Christ Jesus as he so dearly loves you that he gave himself for you. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, thank you that we know that through you we receive the gift of faith. Thank you that the faith surpasses every human reasoning but that it confirms in our hearts through your Holy Spirit that we are believers of the one who is the true King, our true Savior, the one who paid for our sins, the one who is restoring us. And Lord, I pray that you will keep us focused on you so that we will endure, that we will persist in our faith, and that we will take the people around us with us together on this, on this journey so that people can get to know and know you more. And Lord, I pray that you will bless each and every listener to this message, that you will bless them with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that you will bless them through faith so that they will put everything that you give them into action 
for your kingdom, not for their own benefit, but for your benefit alone. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. May you receive the blessing of the love of Jesus Christ, the grace of God our Father, and the power of the Holy Spirit that resides within you. Amen. Oh my God.